What's going on, folks? Hey, uh, I'm Jeff uh, from Green Country Custom Baits. Welcome to part three of the beginner's complete tutorial on custom crankbait artwork. Okay, today's focus is going to be what paints do I need to select in order to get started in airbrush art. Uh, as you can see behind me, I mean, I've got probably, I, I believe I've got over 75 different colors that I currently use. But is that what you need to get started? Watch the rest of the video. And you'll find out what selections you best need in order to get started in custom lure art. I think is essential to uh, most color patterns that you're going to want to replicate in custom lure art. Okay, so uh, we'll just start with, I've got a transparent black, just these creatics. I've got an opaque or semi-opaque uh, white. I've got a transparent white. I've got a pearl white, a pearl silver, transparent yellow, fluorescent yellow, leaf green. You got to have sepia. And this is a wicked line. Uh, you've got to have a uh, light brown, transparent red, orange, fluorescent orange, blue, which is called bright blue, and a transparent uh, light blue. This is Caribbean blue, Maui blue. Uh, any of those will get you to where you can replicate most any patterns out there. I'll get some close-ups of these, but uh, as you can see, it's not a vast um, selection of paints, although it's quite a few. But if you're going to buy, there's some starter sets out there that are just fine. But your bait fish patterns, if you're going to do crawl patterns, if you're going to do uh, try to match other patterns that you see out there on the market, this selection of paints will get you there. Okay. And then as you grow, uh, and, and we'll show you some few others that where you're really wanting to get some more of the iridescence, more of the pearl selections, uh, I'm also going to show you some of those. But this is the basics of what I believe you need in order to shoot the best paints. I, I believe in Creatix paints. Uh, you can shoot these straight out of the bottle uh, without having to do a lot of thinning, depending on the airbrush that you have selected. Um, and, uh, but they're water-based paints. Easy cleanup. As you can see, I've got some custom colors up here. Um, these are not water-based paints, okay? So you gotta use acetone or some type of mineral spirits in order to clean your airbrush. Just a lot more smell. They dry quicker on the bay. Not necessarily required to do a top coat of some type of clear coat, but, uh, uh, and they have their place, I use them. I uh, also use uh, Jacardi. Uh, as a great brand, uh, let's see, I use, uh, this is a Comart, which is a, a Medina product, uh, and let's see, that's pretty much all the selections I use. Within the Creatix line, though, you have auto air colors, which are extremely good. They cost a little bit more than uh, your, just your base Creatix paints, but they, those are extremely well used for uh, extreme detail. They have the Wicked line, which is another great product within the Createx line that I highly recommend. Okay, because you can see I, I use a little bit of all of them. Okay, but just starting out, just buy the base Createx. Uh, they spray extremely good right out of the bottle. Uh, your, your fluorescent paints uh, generally are a little thinner than obviously your opaque paints. Black and white are uh, they have a lot of pigment in them, and so, but a 3.5 uh, airbrush needle, all of these paints will spray extremely well. When you start getting into your pearls, something that's got a lot of larger flake pigments in it, uh, you know, you're going to have to require a lot more air pressure with a 0.35 millimeter needle. Okay, a lot of times I do use a 5.0. I've got an airbrush dedicated to my pearls, aluminum flakes, some of the other things that you do later on. But uh, just getting started, I think this is uh, the best paint selection that you can do. And 
in the next segment of this, we're also going to show you a few others that will dramatically, once you've get, uh, got the processes down, understand how to control the airbrush itself, and want to get more into uh, uh, some of the higher detail, the color shifting paints, I'll show you a few of those that I think would be a great addition to these. But this is perfect mix for getting started. In addition to uh, those primary colors that I showed you before for getting started, uh, if, you, if you got a little extra money and you'd like to uh, add a few things to your repertoire at the beginning, uh, these are some other good selections, you know, because in the fishing lure, we want those bait fish patterns to have a, uh, like most of our shad, thread fin, gizzard shad, they've got a, they've got a shine to them. So uh, adding a hot rod white is uh, an, an excellent pearlescent color. We've already showed you the uh, just basic wicked white, uh, wicked search, uh, silver. Uh, those are great. Uh, having a pearl gold, a pearl copper, a pearl blue, pearl purple, lime. Uh, this is a pearl lime green. Uh, and then our oranges, you know, there's a lot of different oranges used on, on in, in our fishing lures. Uh, our, our, our fish population has different hues of orange, and one that I find I use quite a bit is canary yellow, okay? Uh, again, going back to, I've got some paints set up here behind that are, a, again, a, a great additions. By far, you can get by without having any of these, but... Um, to get some little more spectacular looking patterns out there um, and if you want to do chromes what I have found is by the ALSA uh, group this chrome base coat and chrome kit is excellent for chrome uh, in the Createx line Quicksilver chrome and Quicksilver chrome this is a silver and this is a Quicksilver gold chrome okay uh, these are uh, extremely good. They're very thin. Uh, you, you've got to read instructions and pay close details when, when using these or using the Yalsa. But uh, if you want a chrome baits, uh, they've got options, both of those companies. I also like uh, when doing some detail and adding, adding chrome to baits, I'll also use the Ducardi brand. Uh, excellent chrome product. Also have that in a different shade of a copper. These are metallics, okay? Both of this are metallic gold and metallic copper, okay? A little more of your metal finish look, okay? Behind the blues, um, I like candy colors. Candy colors can be a great um, addition to your paint selection. And then if follow along with the oranges, okay? You can darken once you learn um, how to mix colors and make colors. Uh, you can darken those colors without adding some of these other products. But, uh, you know, if you want this lighter orange, add a little yellow, okay? Add a little white. Uh, but Calmart, I really like the nitrile orange and uh, vermilion. Those are two oranges that I use quite a bit in custom lure art. So, again, uh, got a little extra money to spend if you'd like to start with some of these products as well, uh, then go for it. And by all means, it's not something that, that you necessarily have to have, but again, can make your baits turn out uh, a little bit better and a little less mixing colors in your paint cup. Okay, when I started, I'm, I had a very small selection of paints and just mixed them in the cup. Okay, uh, and you'll learn a lot. You need to understand what different colors do within the, uh, the mixing. Uh, another great thing to have uh, in your arsenal, just a simple, cheap thing you can get from most paint store, is a color wheel. Okay, uh, and this will help you. And if I, you know, got red and yellow, and I add certain amounts, this is the color that I'll get. Okay. Uh, if I've got an orange and I want to add blue, I'll get that. So a great little, helps you start off and learn uh, what adding different colors does uh, to the overall pigment. And on the back of this, it's got complementary colors. Okay, so a lot of times I'll use this one designing a new pattern. Uh, you know, if I've got a bright green, what is the, uh, you know, 
split complement complementary colors off of those uh, what is the complete opposite uh, of that particular color so the complementary color of yellow is violet okay so um, and those look good those go well with your baits once you spray them so if developing patterns the back of this is great but a cheap little product that really help you out as a beginner and getting started and understanding if I had uh, blue and yellow I get green okay pretty simple and uh, really helped me in the beginning get to understand um, what different colors added to other colors but again if you got a little bit of money add those primary colors that I first talked about and um, as you build up uh, and want to add different uh, color schemes to your baits maybe consider adding some of these pearl colors it just gives the bait a lot more flash so until next time I appreciate you stopping in and checking out Green Country Custom Baits Hope this uh, online tutorial is going to help some beginners out there, shorten the learning curve for you. And uh, uh, until next time, we're finished with part three. Part four, we're going to start looking into uh, the different stencils I use in order to help the beginner spray good, accurate lines without having great trigger control.